and welcome back to my little film and TV channel and we're going to have a look at the Railway Children Return today. Yeah, well, one of them does anyway in this, uh, <laughs> not the others, just the one. Just the one returns, a little bit older, of course. Is it 1970? Flipping heck, that's a long time ago. 95 minutes, a PG rating, a family adventure drama directed by Morgan Matthews and written by Danny Brocklehurst, a sequel to the 97, 1970 film, The Railway Children. It's a itself based on the E. Nesbitt novel of the same name. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as far as sequels go, it's, you know, apart from the one character, it's, it's, it's pushing it just a little bit. It released in the UK on the 15th of July 2022 into the cinemas. So uh, I was, I'm recording this on the 22nd of July. It's been out for a week. Uh, Studio Canal were in charge of this one. As at the 22nd of July 2022, at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, Internet Movie Database, just 5.6 out of 10, so not fantastic. Uh, 191 scores and reviews have been left. Of that 191, 96 people scored it between 6 and 9, that's 65% positivity, because only 51 scored it between 2 and 5. I ignore the 1 out of 10s or the 10 out of 10s, as you know. So 65% positivity, so that sounds okay, not bad, not bad, but something that's been um, pushed a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, Certainly been pushed a little bit by the uh, film studios and been advertised. So I personally was looking forward to it. I enjoyed the original. I've not watched the original for a long time, but uh, whether I could go back and watch it again now, pro I'm probably more likely to watch that than watch this again, that's for sure. And what's it about? Well, it's set in rural England, of course it is. I think Yorkshire, I think, against the backdrop of World War Two. Well, children are flooding into the countryside again to escape the bombing of industrial cities. This is set in 1944 when the, the bombing started again, obviously after the uh, the original, uh, back in 1940-ish, 41. A group of young evacuees are taken into a rural home, of course, with Jenny Agata. Jenny Agata is the uh, grandma and begin to settle into their new lives. But when the children encounter a young soldier who, like them, is far away from home, a true adventure ensues. Yeah, OK. It stars Bo Gadsden as Lily Watts, Austin Haynes as Thomas Waterbury, Eden Hamilton as Patty Watts, Zach Cudby as Ten Ted Watts, KJ Atkins as Abraham Abe McCarthy, Jenny Agatha as Roberta Bobby Waterbury, Tom Courtney as Uncle Walter, and Sheridan Smith, yes, as Annie, yes. Someone said about her overacting. I thought that was a bit mean to say that, but uh, Sheridan Smith as Annie. And, yeah, not a lot of scores. There were no, nothing on Rotten Tomatoes yet. Um, got Metacritic. Just three reviews been been left, and we've got no positive, three mixed, and no negative. So, again, more in line with what the Internet Movie Database is saying. Empire's Ian Freer, he give it 60 out of 100, so that's okay. Perhaps not as heartwarming or charming as the first film, it's not. The Railway Children Return is engaging and entertaining in different ways, winningly played by its fresh cast. Yeah, I think the cast does very, very well. Um, the, the kids are uh, quirky enough. I like them, you know, me and young actors... Uh, uh, some, some I don't like, but these were okay. These were fine in this. Uh, the Irish Times' is Donald Clark also gave it 60 out of 100 and said, The new film is a plodding affair, it is, characterised more by fastidious set dressing than by narrative tension. Yes, I, I would agree with that as well. Uh, it was only 90-odd minutes, but it felt a bit longer. <laughs> it felt a bit longer to me. And the Independence Clarice Luffrey said, The Railway Children Return is part sequel, part remake, with a carefully selected smattering of callbacks for the fans. Was there more than one? I don't know. Tom Courtney, was he in the original? I don't think so. Uh, I have no idea. Anyway, yeah. Um, part sequel, part remake. Yeah, there is a lot of homage. There's homage, of course, to the original. Right, my little thoughts on this, guys. I uh, shouldn't spend too long on this. I mean, as a, as a family drama set against the backdrop of World War Two, it's not awful, uh, but it's not anything special either. It, I, I just thought it could have been a lot better than it was. The story of evacuees in itself is okay. That can be quite fun, seeing how they cope. But they all seem to cope quite quickly, quite well, even, even with the bullies at school that they seem to sort out. But the additional plot of the hiding soldier, uh, and all the events around that just seemed a little bit implausible to me. It might have been spot on and accurate, but I just thought it was just there for effect. It didn't seem right, uh, a bit less, but certainly how it was handled as well, uh, a little less believable uh, in the story, which is a shame. 
I think if it was taken perhaps with a different, slightly different slant, it may have been a little bit better. But the way they did it, no. Um, obviously, it took me back to um, the classic film. Um, is it where the wind? Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, Whistle down the wind. Is it Whistle down the wind? Yeah, it took me. I had a feel of that. I think they've gone more that way than what they did with this. I think it would have been a lot better. Uh, I just think they perhaps missed a little trick with the way they set it out. So, for me, just an okay watch. Acted okay, fine. Say, I like, I like the young actors in this, and, of course, I like Sheridan and Jenny Agatha anyway. Uh, the kids were quirky, which is which helps. But there's a bit of force. I thought it's a bit more force sentimentality in this to try and again appeal as the first one did, which was a bit unnecessary. Again, they didn't need to do it. You could have had nice little scenes without going over the top, which I think they did. But yeah, a bit bland in parts. But it does have the odd moment, and it's okay. It's an okay watch. So I, yeah, I was going to give it a five point five. I think that's a bit cruel. It is watchable. So if it is watchable, it's a 6 out of 10, and I'll give it that. I'll give it the minimum. I'll give it a 6 out of 10 because it's certainly watchable. As I said, just not quite what I expected, not quite as, you know, I think it could have been better. I think they could have tweaked it just a little bit. Uh, obviously, some of the sets are nice. Uh, some of the sets look a bit cheap. Uh, you know, the CGI or whatever they've used just looks a little bit TV, TV drama-ish rather than a feature film on at the cinema, so... Perhaps not, not a massive budget, I don't think, so that's probably affected it. But it does it did have a TV drama feel to it and probably a children's TV drama feel to it, which is possibly even worse than, say, an adult's drama feel. But uh, that's, that's just an opinion anyway. Six out of ten. Let me know what you think, guys, if you enjoyed it. Great to hear from you. Till we meet again, please stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.